<laughs> Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. Uh, today is going to be a long and busy day. Um, it's week one of my ob rotation. Yesterday was my first official day of like clinicals. Um, today's Thursday, second day. But um, I'm working the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift the first week and a half. But uh, this morning at from 8.30 to 12.30, I have um, a clinical skills like session on campus where we learn um, labor and like fetal heart tracing and things like that. Then after that, I head back to the hospital for 1 p.m. scrubbing session. And then my shift starts at 3 p.m. And then I head back to campus because we have our class every Thursday from about 4 to 6 o'clock. And after that, we're required to finish our shift. So I head back to the hospital to finish up from about 6 to 11 p.m. So I'm already tired thinking about it. Um, I worked yesterday, got off around 11.30, got home around midnight, went to sleep after that. So I'm pretty tired. Um, I need to make sure I pack a lot of snacks. I need to make sure I eat. When I got to my 3 p.m. to 11 shift, I wasn't able to eat dinner. So I'm gonna figure that out, like what I'm gonna be eating when I work the evening shift. But yeah, I'll take you guys along. Um, I'll try to update you guys in between. If not, I'll just update you guys at the end. Alrighty, I'm headed out now. So that was a pretty cool uh, simulation. We did um, labor. We learned how to check, you know, how far along they are. So like, how many centimeters are they dilated? Um, what's the presentation? Like cephalic breach. Um, uh, what percent of effacement are they and like what station they're in and after that I learned how to read contractions telling them when to push so pretty much the whole delivery process and then also how to read like the fetal heart tracings so depending on your knowledge and how comfortable your attending is with you they will let you deliver the baby but pretty much every student is going to deliver the placenta so after the birth of course the next thing is to cut the vocal cord and then deliver the placenta and that's pretty much the student's job so we learned that as well so it was a pretty good uh, simulation and then we also learned how to um like gown ourselves because you know when labor comes sometimes you're just rushing you're not gonna have this grub tech to gown you and put on your gloves so you have to do that on your own while still staying sterile so we learned how to do that and now I'm about to head over to the hospital because I think we also have like another session at one o'clock, like a scrubbing session. I don't know what area you guys live in, but it is cold in Atlanta already. Oh my gosh, the weather literally changed overnight. Hey guys. Um, so just a little update. I am currently in the student's um, call room. Um, my classmate, the patient that her patient um, is currently in labor, so she's in the room now with them. Two of my patients, um, one recently got the epidural, the other is going to be induced soon. So um, hopefully some babies come tonight. Um, and while I wait around, I'm just watching online meta video on um, contraception. All right, I'll check in with you guys later. By the way, these brown scrubs are hospital issue scrubs, which we have to wear if we ever scrub it and go to the OR or anything like that. No deliveries tonight. I signed out my patients to um, my classmates who are working the night shift, so they're most likely going to see those two deliveries tonight. Yeah, so right now it's about um, 11.45. Uh, I left the house like around 7.45, just been gone all day. Um, no studying able to be uh, to get done today. Um, and then tomorrow I work 3 to 11, but I also have to go in for like a, sutur a suturing skill session. This first week they have us like doing a lot of other different things because it is the first week, like a lot of different training sessions and simulation sessions. So doing one of those tomorrow at 12.30 and then I'm just gonna stay there till my 3 p.m. shift. Um, and then I work Saturday shift, I'm off Sunday. 
So I'm gonna try to get as much studying as I can done, um, as I can get done this weekend, hopefully. Um, but obviously, like at this point, getting home at this time, like all there is to do is take a shower and go to sleep. Like there is no studying happening at this point. So working this shift for the next week and a half, I know my studying is gonna have to get done um, in the morning through early afternoon before um, I go into my shift. But yeah, um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow morning. So I wanted to give y'all like an overview of what the um, OBGYN rotation is all about because I know a lot of uh, people commented and said that they are interested in going into ob -GYN. So it's an eight week rotation. Um, we have three weeks of labor and delivery and then three weeks of gynecology. The last week is kind of prepping for our shelf exam. The first week is like orientation slash starting whatever the first service you're on. So my first three and a half weeks are labor and delivery and then the final three weeks are um, gyn. So um, we do rotating shifts, eight hour shifts. So the first um, week and a half, I'm on the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. shift. Then the second week I'll be doing night shift 11 p.m. to to 7 a.m. and then my final week of labor and delivery I'll be doing the morning shift 7 a.m. to uh, 3 p.m. and so pretty much your responsibility is to um, you know assign yourself to a patient it could be a laboring patient or it could be a patient that comes in through uh, triage and so when they arrive to the clinic if they're about to go um, it's their due day or they feel like they're having contractions they're about to go into labor you do a full history and physical on them and then they'll be admitted to the floor and then you'll follow them throughout their whole um, laboring process and hopefully by the end of your shift you, you know you may be able to see um, a delivery the other part of the triage is um you know any pregnant woman can come in she doesn't have to be you know getting ready uh getting close to her delivery day say she's maybe 12 weeks she comes in because she's having leg pain or abdominal pain you know she's going to go to her ob clinic so you know you triage her figure out why she's here do the h p present you know report back to your uh back to your uh physician uh your resident or your attending so that's pretty much how it works you know there's two sides um and then as far as the delivery, you know, if that's your patient, you're allowed to be in there on the delivery, um, depending, like I said earlier, on your attendings, uh, comfort level with you and your knowledge, you can't deliver the baby, but you're for sure going to deliver the placenta. Um, if your patient goes in for a C-section, you know, you'll be in there um, with them for the C-section. So that's just the labor and delivery side. The other part of ob is the gynecology, which I have three weeks of that. Um, I can't really talk about the specifics of what the student's responsibility is because I haven't had that yet, but I know that, you know, you are in clinic. Um, you also have two OR days a week. So the kind of things you can see with gyn is uh, the type of surgeries like hysterectomies, you know, removing your uterus or removing your ovaries, removing your fallopian tubes, um, tubal ligation, um, removal of um, different type of cancers, you know, ovarian cancer, um, endometrial cancer, um, things like that. So yeah, the student's responsibility, um, you know, you need to know how to do a proper pelvic exam, how to do a breast exam. This is also similar to the L&D site, you know, how to do the pelvic exam, the full um, OB exam. And, you know, you scrub in on the surgeries, you know, making sure you're prepared for that. The thing about ob gyn is seriously just like, it's like a whole new language, like the way uh, all the abbreviations they have, you know, the lingo they have, the way they even do their um, HMPs and um, progress notes, you know, the history and physicals. So, for example, um, I had to find a template to create, um, to, you know, get my history and physical in order. This is just an example online that I found. This is not a real patient. An example history and physical, say um, a laboring woman came into the clinic ready to be admitted for uh, for delivery or if somebody just came in with abdominal cramps, they may be like 20 weeks along. This is how I write up the HMP. So example, chief complaint, leakage of fluid, contractions, vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, etc. So the history of uh, present illness. 27 year old African American G6 P2123 at 37.5 by LMP consistent with first TMUS presents for so and so. Patient reports um, LOF, VB, or contractions. Pregnancy com complicated by so and so. Prenatal care received at so and so. So that's just the HPI um, to break down what all those different things mean. 
so G6, P2, 1, 2, 3. G6 is how many pregnancies you have had, including your current pregnancy. And then the P lets you know what happened to those um, to those uh, pregnancies. So you break it down by F, how many full-term pregnancies do you have? And then P, how many preterm um, deliveries did you have? And then A, how many abortions or miscarriages that you had? That's anything below 20 weeks. And then the L, how many living children that you have? So the GP allows you to know how many pregnancies and then what happens to those pregnancies. And then at 37.5, she's 37 weeks and five days by LMP. This was dated by her last menstrual period. That's how you date it, by the first day of the last menstrual period. From there, you add nine months plus seven days and that's your due date. And then this is consistent with first TMS. This dating was consistent with her first trimester ultrasound. And then um, no LOF, that's loss of fluids. So kind of like did her water break or anything like that. VB, vaginal bleeding, contractions, and so on. So that's your HPI. And then you move down to the OB history. She said she had previous pregnancies. So what happened with those pregnancies? Were they full term? Were there any complications? Anything like that? List the years, um, you know list how many weeks she carried to and all that and then you get down to your guy in history you need to ask the menstrual triad so when did she first um, start her period are they regular you know how many days 28 to 30 and how many days do they last you know five to seven days you know what is it for her and then you ask her about stds you need to ask her when she had her last pap smear was it abnormal um you know things like that and then you get down to the regular things which we typically do on other rotations like past medical history surgical history medications allergies and then for the physical exam, you're not only doing the physical exam for your patient, you're also doing the physical exam for the, the baby. So you know the fetal heart tracings, um, you know, what's the baseline, is there any accelerations, decelerations, is there any variability. So it is a learning curve. Um, it's different. OB is definitely different as far as how we ask questions, what questions we ask, and how we present. And even just outside of the way we present or how we um, are asking questions, just the learning outside that we do on our own is a lot. For surgery, you know, these are a lot of things that we saw like in um, second year, like pathology and pathophys, like, you know, pancreatitis or gallbladder disease or, you know, things with your liver. Like we learn those things, but with OB, it's like, I don't think any other rotation will really prepare you for that. And even second year, we didn't really talk about you know, OB and gyne related things, you know, maybe some of the type of cancers. But yeah, it's definitely like a lot of new learning, a lot of outside studying that you need to do on your own. So there is some um, challenge to that. But you know, overall, it's going to be um, a lot of learning, a lot of learning about women's health, which is great as well. So yeah, these next seven or so weeks, all my focus is in on is on OB gyne learning as much as I can and seeing as much as I can. Um, as far as this being a specialty that I would go into, I'm not sure if the lifestyle is really for me, you know, um, the call schedule they have, you know, the ability for your patients to be able to call you any time of the day, um, you know, have that access to you. I'm not even sure exactly how it works, but you know, if you have an OB, um, if you have an OB, you want to be able to call them whenever you feel something is wrong, and, you know, just have that access to them. And also the scope of the specialty you know only dealing with women women's health um you know i don't know i just don't want to be looking down somebody's vagina every single day <laughs> like that's just not for me um obviously there's more to it in ob guide um but yeah i don't know about this being a specialty for me but yeah i'm still gonna soak up as much as i can during my eight weeks on this rotation but um, I do have a shift today from 3 to 11, but before that, um, I'm heading to the hospital uh, to be there at 12.30 for a suturing session that we have. So I'm just about to get ready for that. Alrighty, I'm about to head out. Um, thank you guys for watching again this week. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.